Hi there, I'm the Mechanic Gone Rogue. Today, I'm going to be attempting to explore perhaps the most asked question I've received on my battery videos up to this point. Is it rechargeable? Well, today, we're going to find out. Now, as I was making this video, I found that I had too much content I felt for one video, so I've decided to split it into two parts. I'm going to be sticking with aluminum and graphite sheet as my battery electrodes. And in part one, I'm going to be exploring using salt water as the electrolyte. And in part two, I'm going to be exploring using the ethylene glycol based deputectic solvent that I previously talked about in my last video. I've also specially designed some casings and equipment to facilitate these new tests. Wait, did you say designed? Yep, sure did. Well, how did you do that? That's a good question. Which brings me to some exciting news. I bought a 3D printer. Oh yes, I've been really busy behind the scenes. And it's all thanks to you guys. This printer was largely paid for by support either directly or indirectly from my viewers. So a huge thank you to all of you who've supported me so far. If you enjoyed my videos and want to say thanks, an easy way to do that is to buy me a coffee through the link in the banner above me. Or you know, if you don't have any cash to spare, comments are great too. First, I'll go over my new equipment. This was all designed with a free online CAD software called Tinkercad. I'll try to include links to all the CAD files in the description. I have new test cells, a control box, and a test LED. There are two variations of the test cell. For today, I'll be using this one. It is in a card shape, like my first battery design. As you can see, I've kept the dimensions close to the playing card measurements of the original. There's approximately 570 square centimeters of each active material in the cell. Assembly is very similar as well. First, a layer of aluminum, then some paper towel and electrolyte, then some graphite, and finally the cover, which is held in place by bolts. I'll have some overhanging aluminum and graphite, which I can fold over and secure with copper tape. These will be my connection points. Next up is my control box. It contains two switches and three options to connect. One connection is for my battery, one is for a USB cable, which I will use to recharge the battery, and the third is for the battery output to the LED. The switches are to control the USB power to the battery as well as the battery power to the LED. Finally, let's talk about the test LED. Using graphite sheet, I got about 0.8 volts per cell. In previous videos, I've stacked up multiple cells to get the voltage necessary to work an LED. Now that I've switched to using graphite sheet, my cost per cell has risen as well. To try and reduce the amount of graphite sheet I use in testing, I investigated ways of boosting my cell voltage. From my search, I learned about Joule Thieves, which are inexpensive types of voltage boosters. So I built one, and that's why I've attached to the LED. Now I can light an LED with just one of these cells instead of 10. Before I forget, quick disclaimer here. I do this because I enjoy it, not because I know what I'm doing. As such, I'm wrong sometimes. So always take my videos with a grain of salt. Also, this could be dangerous, so don't try to do any of this at home. My full disclaimer is down in the video description. All right, let's get into it. This is the cell performance right after being assembled. We've got about 0.86 volts and 6.5 milliamps. A quick note on the amperage. The amperage was measured in series with the test light and I struggled to get a good connection with my test leads, which is why the reading bounced around a bit. In terms of durability, let's see how long this will power the test LED. I attached both wires for the LED to the battery connections with some additional copper tape. It ran the LED for about four hours. Although the last two hours, the LED was dim, as you can see here. For those of you who keep on asking about the milliamp hour rating, I believe we can find that out by multiplying the duration of operation in hours by the initial current. That would give this cell a milliamp hour rating of 26. Well, I guess this won't be powering a Tesla anytime soon. Before I get into recharging the cell, I want to bring up a couple points on its longevity. As the battery sits, a lot of salt crystals build up externally. Seems almost like the salt is seeping through the graphite. I'm guessing that this is because graphite is porous. I'm only using sheet that's 0.1 millimeters thick, so maybe the salt is passing through the sheet as the water evaporates. 
I had hoped that the graphite would help seal the cell and prevent water evaporation, as this was the primary cause for failure in the original design. Obviously, that's not happening here. Maybe a thicker sheet is required, but I guess that's a test for another day. Let's take the cell apart and see what's going on inside. This cell only had electrolyte applied once. It was drained down to about 0.2 volts during the LED test, and it sat for about a week before I tore it down. Besides the heavy salt accumulation on the graphite, we can see the paper towel is completely dry and the aluminum is barely touched. Also, there's barely any salt crystals on either of them. This tells me that this cell has not reached anywhere near its potential, so there's certainly room for improvement. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for. Will it recharge? I'll cut to the punchline. Yes, it does. And there are a couple different ways of doing it. First off, it can be done mechanically. The battery can be rehydrated with salt water or have the aluminum sheet changed out. Rehydrating is most effective only if the battery has partially or completely dried out. Even then, it doesn't restore the battery to its original state. If the paper towel is still wet and the voltage is low, I didn't find a noticeable improvement. Secondly, we can recharge it by applying an electrical current to the cell. To be on the safe side, for this test, I've changed my workspace from my dining room table to an actual workbench in a well-ventilated shop. This is where my test box comes into play. Here is the USB charger that we'll be using to recharge the battery. It is plugged into a simple USB wall outlet rated for 5 volts and 1 amp output. The left switch controls the power input to the battery, and the right switch controls the battery power output. Let's see what a 5 minute charge does. So far, nothing has exploded or caught fire. The cell is charging at just over 3.3 volts. I did notice a faint popping and crackling noise coming from the cell. I put my microphone close to the cell so you should be able to hear it too. After the charge is complete, the voltage of the cell is sitting at 2.6 volts. Before I turn on the LED, I'm going to pull the USB cord out just so no one can say I was running the LED with it. Here we go. Well, that is a lot brighter than before. Now the initial recharge voltage of 2.6 dissipates quite quickly. I found that the cell settles down to around 1.2 volts output. The amperage output is also higher at 30 to 20 milliamps. A quick note on the amperage reading, I'm using a different setting to take this reading. The LED was so bright I immediately assumed that the amperage output would be higher. So I switched my meter to the 20 amp scale instead of the 200 milliamp scale, which was slightly overkill. The cell ran the LED for another four hours, and like the first time, the last two hours of operation the LED was substantially weaker. To wrap things up, I want to draw a couple conclusions. As we found out, these batteries are rechargeable, and they recharge very quickly. I got four hours of runtime from just five minutes of charging. I can't help but wondering if this setup is acting more like a capacitor than an actual battery. But I don't have that much experience with capacitors, so once again, I don't know. The crackling noise when the battery is being recharged would suggest that the water is being electrolyzed during the recharge process. I suspect this will affect the longevity of the battery. Even if I'm able to seal the battery and stop the water from evaporating, it would still be broken down by the recharge process. If any of you have a theory as to how this is working, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys have to say. And don't forget, stay tuned for part two, where I test out my electrolyte made with the coolant-based deep eutectic solvent. I wanna say thank you all for watching this. Your support is literally what's made this video possible. Don't forget to leave a like. And if you wanna support my channel further, you can follow the link down in the description and buy me a coffee. Thanks again, I'll see you next time. MGR signing out.